Hi guys, I'm here with Jason. He does work with the traditional resin casting. So Ryan is going to tell you a little bit about what he does. I'm the uh, production mould maker and I step in as master mould maker sometimes. Um, essentially, I set up, I fill the moulds, uh, mix the silicon, fill the moulds and cut them out at the following day when they're set and they get passed on to the production side where they get cast. That's pretty much it. I've got a Submaster here for the British Airborne Jeep and I've got a mould that's ready to be cut for it. Mm -hmm. so I'll just cut this out quick. I'm going to get to see in real time what it is you do. Yeah. So what is this stuff? I mean, it looks really squidgy. It is. Um, yeah, have a feel. Look at that. <laughs> Great, thank you. It's a uh, two-part silicon. Two-part silicon, okay. Yeah. I just take the edges and corners off to tidy up the mould. I'm going to lost a finger by now. There's a lot of speedy cutting going on with the scalpel here. You've been doing this a long time, I assume. Um, first started mould making back in 2007. 2007? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for another wargaming company I shan't mention. But I've been with Warlord now since 2008. Mm -hmm. like that. That's going to need changing now. New blade. John likes to see that. <laughs> you can't look at a scalpel without changing the blade. I'm no, too I cheap. I reuse them as much as possible. I tend to use one blade per mould. One a month? One a mould. One a mould. Yeah. I was going to say one a month. So my initial cuts are always like a zigzag. And is that to just give you a bit more flexibility? It's to lock the moulds together when... Oh, when you cut. press it back together? Yeah. They were, they were like teeth. Oh, I see. And then, I don't know if you can see it. I'm following it down. Uh -huh. So if that's like that, I'm now coming down that piece there. Right. And following that red line. Right. So that's an attempt to get the flash lines somewhere that are easy to fix, I'm assuming. Uh, trying to minimalise more than anything right. else. Because these are placed in the mould. Uh, the best way we can get them to minimalise the lines and to essentially help reduce any form of air bubbles. And then using spreaders. And that's so you can see where it is that you're attempting to cut. So yeah. Have a look at the model. Yeah. Excellent. And um, the red marking on the Submaster aids in that. I'd, I'd never even thought about the fact that somebody had to decide where that mould line goes from two halves of a lump of rubber yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or silica. And it's, a, you know, we consult with one another as well as a team mm -hmm. on the best possible way of doing things so Rachel the master mold maker she'd consult with me regarding if it would be easier doing it one way or another making production moulds mm -hmm. and then uh, Bashik who's um, the oldest serving um, stripper type uh, mould prepping 
operative, mm -hmm. I'll liaise with her to decide the best way to make production mods for them. Right. So that it works for her as well as yeah. working for the yeah. model. There'll be things that, that make sense to her that don't make so much sense to you. Yeah. That makes, yeah. Makes sense to me? Um, you know, I've always believed if the person that's prepping the moulds is happy, you know, doesn't mind prepping it, doesn't mind taking models out. Some some moulds are really nasty to strip mm -hmm. and take the models out. But if they're happy doing them, you know, they, the moulds will last longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So at the moment, this particular mould I'm making now, um, we're, I'd be hoping for about 50 copies. So 50 models will come out of that one mould? Yeah, I hope, yeah. yeah. Is, that, is that about average? Or? Uh, it depends on the model. Uh, some have deep undercuts on them. Um, whatever, but we're currently uh, experimenting with this silicon. We've only been using it about a month or so, mainly down to cost reasons. Mm -hmm. But we've we find it very good. Hopefully it's not too distracting having to talk to us while you're actually doing your real life job. <laughs> nah, it's fine. And oh, that's always a problem when that comes away. That's that piece. As you can see, there's the Jeep inside. So that's an, that's an original? Yeah, that's the original where we've had to pick it up. Mm -hmm. on the wheel arch and that comes away so once you can get the model out the mold's good yeah so that's a good mold now as you can see that's where the resin goes in and you can see the reason why for the lock cuts so when it all goes back together mm -hmm. there's very little movement between to keep that that join between the two parts yeah. as smooth as possible very nice um, that's it Thanks. All right, mate. Well, thank you for your time. Okay, so Tom's going to pour uh, some of the resin and we're going to have another employee to explain the process to you, what's happening. Okay, so we need to do the two-part material. Uh, we need a 50-50 mix. Um, and Tom will, uh, will judge how much mixture he needs. And this is done by eye and experience? Mostly. It is, yes, it is, yes. Right. Okay. So it's not, it's not apple juice and old <laughs> wheat? <laughs> No, not today. Not today. <laughs> that's not today. tomorrow's Apple. brew. That's tomorrow's brew. Yeah. Right, so when okay. you're doing your mixing, you need to not whisk. You don't want to. Uh, what it's not. What, it's not going to whisk the mix. All you need to do is just stir it gently because it needs to make sure those two parts go together. Because what you'll end up with is a, a leaching, uh, which will be quite hard, or a shininess, which you, you, your paint won't adhere to the model. So we just want right. to make sure the two parts. So you take the time just to stir those two parts in. Mm -hmm. And then once he feels that's it, so um, that's been mixed, and then he'll pour. But he won't pour the um, he won't pour them right to the very top because when that goes into the vacuum chamber, it'll all come out, and then you'll end up with a, a massive goo all over the top. So what you want to do is part pour, and then when that goes into the vacuum chamber, what it'll do then is the mixture will just skin the uh, will just skin the sides of the of the pieces. Oh right. And then we'll come back to that, and then we'll do a top up after. Otherwise, you'll just end with all mixture will just go out all over the tray. Right. So there's there's two stages from here. Yeah, two stages. So this so is just going to take the finishing detail. Yes. Makes sense. Okay. So put that in the vacuum. Jet. Remembering to put the jug in the vacuum chamber. Because you need as to, well. Yeah, because you need to degas that mix as well. So you'll degas the model and also you'll need to take the bubbles out of the jug. So he'll always remember to put his jug in there. 
<laughs> always remember to put your jog in there. Always remember, always remember. And then we're about it's two minutes. Yeah. 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 It's, so we're on for about two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, again, that time will be adjusted depending what time uh, what time of day it is, how warm it's getting. Mm -hmm. So it's very much the boys have a feel for what they need to. What and this, they need this to is do. all like experience and judgment. It and is, yes. It is, yeah. yes. And I you know, like that old yeah. school craft to it, yeah. you know. Is a, so you'll go to the, from, like, say, from a previous mix and they'll know that, okay, so two minutes, maybe not, we'll need to change that down to, say, a minute yeah. and a half. Um, on the open, on the open moulding, you've got more, you, there's more of a judge of what you'll need to do with that, because you must have your mixture, because you're going to do the final pour on the top, so, but you'll see that in a, in a moment, anyway. So what he'll do is bring that back um, to atmosphere. So he's slowly knocking that off so that it doesn't, if, the, if, the, if all the air rushes in then you'll end up with more spillage on there and it just makes a very messy tray for me to clean out when it gets, right. when it's dry at the other Oh, way. do you do that finishing? Yeah, so do I do the finishing part, so this bit's quite crucial Remember for me. Remember this job, look at that. <laughs> so you can see I'm here and then what I'll do, I'll just do a top up on there. Right. We are very basic, you know, we've got cat litter trays and it's boards, um, but you can you can judge those and get a really good um, a really good flat model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that the vacuum that's just pulled it into the mold. Yeah, it's just it's pulled still, it it's into. It's going to be baked separately. Yeah. So what? We'll ha so it'll as you as it goes into the vacuum chamber. So it'll it'll push the mixture out. Then it'll bring that back in once you take it back to uh, back to atmosphere. And then once you start topping those up again. Um, and then we put them out on, on there and it's two hours and then we'll probably take those out. Again, we'll have it's to judge dried, that. It's air is it? Yes. It's an it's a exothermic reaction, if I'm right. Somebody exothermic might, reaction, yes. Yeah. Somebody might say I'm wrong, right. um, but I don't mind. But, uh, so yeah, so, the exothermic, so it creates, a, creates the heat. Once the two parts are together, you've got the time, the timer is ticking from that point. Once you get those two parts together, um, the longer you, the longer it's left, and you're not doing anything with it, it will start. It will generate that heat, right. and then it will start to, it will start to cure. So you want to make sure that you're doing everything with it when it's in its most liquid form. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. And then we just do the final degas on that because he's done a top up and because he's pouring in, he'll pour, he'll be pouring bubbles within within that cavity again. Right. So we're just making sure that. Um, all the bubbles have gone and then we'll do the very final top up which is where he does it and he pulls that in and then he just leaves it and we don't do anything with it until it's dried. Okay, so we're going to have a little look at the demolding process now. So you're the gaffer around here. What's your in this I'm part? I'm not. I'm just bossy. That's oh, you're just a gobby just one. Bossy. I'm just gobby. That's all. And so what's your name, Miss? Um, my name's Rachel. All right, so Rachel's going to show us the demolding. So this is that inverse of what uh, we were showing over there earlier, That's basically. That's right, yeah. So we'll take the mould. So you've seen, you've seen Tom doing the pouring. Mm -hmm. um, so after two hours, uh, maybe a little bit longer because we've got quite a few in the cycle, we'll take the moulds. Now we've wrapped these moulds beforehand and it's just a uh, low tack tape that we use so it doesn't, so the adhesive doesn't react to the tape. And all we'll do is take, um, take the tape off. All right, yeah. That's like, like a not, not sticky parcel tape. Yeah, it is, yeah. And the, the, you don't get a reaction. And then on here, and what I'm doing is I'm just making sure as you, you saw when Jason was doing his cutting, all mm. you make sure is that you're releasing the silicon. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to pull that and rip that and out. And take the because, mold away with yeah, the model. because you'll end yeah. up taking, that's right. And you'll, so if you just it's squeeze them out. Isn't it? It's all a bit rough looking at it. Hands yeah, on. You, yeah, you, you've got very strong thumbs by the end of a, by right. the end of a, a shift. So on here, so what we're doing is making sure that there's no, there's no uh, resin that's been pulled on this. If there is, we'll clean that down. Then we're going to make sure that we're cleaning the feeds off so we don't take them down too low because obviously we don't want to make we don't want to change the shape of the model mm -hmm. clip those off get rid of those and then you just end up with a nice clean model hopefully somebody's can paint with okay thank you very much So if you like bolt action and you're looking to start the system or start a new army, on our website modelingforadvantage.co.uk we have a range of the starter sets as well as a few of the starter armies. Do consider buying from us as a way of supporting the channel. Thank you for watching.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.